here. Let's get straight to it. We got a lot to talk about, uh, obviously. I, I think the first thing to mention, uh, the very first thing to mention is uh, how uh, much I empathize and how much I feel for uh, these football players, these players and these coaches who uh, were royally uh, screwed by uh, a, a lot of things, uh, most most of which many of you can figure out, which I'll get into in detail. Uh, but I wanted to acknowledge, as we began the show today, their incredibly, um, uh, I, I guess, enriching and, and, and really heartwarming season uh, to, to watch and to cover and to discuss uh, and to take in. It was uh, what you ask for from your student athletes. It's almost uh, idyllic, right? You have a situation where kids are asked to take a leap of faith when Mike Norvell gets here. And they're on the wrong end of a series of calamities and catastrophic mistakes from adults that run the program, right? And so they're not willing necessarily to trust yet again. Some are cast off. Some are guys that were betrayed by uh, the adults in the room. And yet they believe and they go ahead and they stick around and they fight. And they work every day to get better to pull us out of this godforsaken hellhole of irrelevance. And slowly we watch the pieces come together because of that sacrifice. And watching a glimpse of what could be just a year ago got us all excited about what was possible this year because of their sacrifices, their dedication, their belief in their coaches and in themselves, and most importantly, in each other. And then this happens. They find a way to go undefeated. They do everything that has ever been asked of them, and they do it in the face of overwhelming adversity. One injury after the next to key starters all on one side of the ball over and over and over again, up against it. But they win because football is the ultimate team game. It's not one player. There are teams who find ways to lean heavy on other segments that they never anticipated having to lean heavy on because it wasn't that grouping that was thought to lead the way. It was the one that had to respond when the segment group projected to be the catalyst for success suffers an injury and then another injury and then another injury. But through that dedication and hard work and commitment to each other and the willingness to fight and sacrifice, you find ways to win games. And this team won all of them, every last one of them, which saw us arrive, of course, in a place in Charlotte in which you were playing for a conference championship, presumably one more time to win a football game, to punch your ticket into the college football playoff, because rightfully you were assured and had been by history by precedent, that you would win this game and you would find yourself in said college football playoff. But alas, didn't happen. It's not a playoff. It's an invitational. If you ever doubted that, you have an overwhelming set of circumstances and proofs before you. We arrived at this place after three weeks of grandstanding, three weeks of politicking by the SEC and those that carry water for the SEC. The commissioner, Greg Sankey, and those who service him were all open about their intentions. That includes some talking heads at ESPN and elsewhere. And so there is a lot to unpack here, but I want to start with the recognition that when a team, in this case, your team, my team, when a team is denied an opportunity by a committee or anybody else, to fulfill a goal, a dream, one that every athlete who's ever played the game, every coach who's ever coached the game, aspires to achieve from the first time they ever lace them up. Well, what happens when that is denied? When access to achieving a lifelong dream is denied? It feels a little unfair. That's putting it mildly. But it causes outright hostility. You see that today, right? There's real hostility in the air today. There's a sense that what was done yesterday was 
iniquitous, without question. For the last 12 years, while being tasked with putting, quote, in the best four, the committee has routinely chosen, chosen instead teams that were the most deserving. Hell, they just did it last year. They just did it last year with TCU. TCU was an underdog in their own conference championship game last year to a Kansas State team that entered said game with three losses. <laughs> so you're one of the best four teams in the country and you're an underdog to a three-loss team in your own conference? Oh, by the way, they lost the game. They lost the game to Kansas State and proceeded to get seated higher than Ohio State, who was quite obviously better than TCU. They're not following some sort of the best guideline and we're going to put them in that order. No, they're not doing that. They proved it again just a year ago. Get the hell out of here with that. It's about the best teams. No, it hasn't been. It's been about the most deserving teams, always has. Nobody thought 2021 Cincinnati was worth a damn. Nobody thought that team was a best four team in the country. They weren't, but they were deserving. They went 13-0, and 8-0 in their conference. They had an out-of-conference win against Notre Dame. And so the committee said, you know what? They deserve to be in. I mean, what else can they do? They did everything they could. You know and I know they're going to get the hell beat out of them, but they deserve to be in, so we're going to let them in. There are nine other teams, minimum, that are better than Cincinnati, and we know this, but they deserve to get in. They did everything that was asked of them. We're kind of stuck. It's an imperfect system. Uh-oh. Well, let's just put them in and let them play Alabama and see what happens. Well, you know what's going to happen. They're going to get the hell kicked out of them. And they did. And they did. Michigan State, 2015. Who are we kidding? The whole world knew Michigan State was not one of the best four teams in college football, but they went 11-1, and 7-1 and in their conference. But this is a Michigan State team that lost to Nebraska, that won by three over Purdue, that beat Iowa 16-13. Hey, man. Power five conference champion. They went 11 and one. We got, we got to put them in. They earned it. They found a way. They won on a miracle against Michigan. They're in. We got to put them in. What are you going to do? You know what? I know what's going to happen. If we project ahead, which the committee is clearly doing now, if we project ahead, I got to tell you, I think Alabama will kill them. They did 38 to nothing. And we all knew it was going to happen. But guess what? They put them in anyhow, because it's not your job to guess at what the score might be or who's the more entertaining game. You take the teams that are the most deserving. I mean, we could go on. I've got a ton of these. We can go back through all of this, how many times they've done it. And they have subsequently always chosen the most deserving team. Now, this show is going to meander today. There are a lot, as I said at the outset, of things to unpack. So when you, you can look at any number of things, but I think first and foremost, if you needed any further evidence, and you did not, but if you needed any further evidence that Florida State and anybody else who cares to play big boy football and reap the financial benefits of it, if you are that program, this university, you have got to find a way as soon as humanly possible to get the hell up out of here. Because guess what? You feel empty today. I feel empty today. It felt a little bit like the integrity of a sport that we're passionate about was compromised in a way we never thought possible. And that leaves you feeling empty and enraged and sad. And those are all fair and valid feelings to have today. But guess what? They're not going to stop playing college football. Florida State's all in on college football. It is the economic force that drives the entire athletic department. So you can't wallow in self-pity today. You got screwed. Absolutely. At least it's out in the open. You know, you always thought behind the curtains there might be some tugging and pulling and all that good stuff. Phrasing, Jeff. Well, now it's just out there in the open. It's almost like racism. I'd rather the guy just let me know exactly who he is rather than feign being a man of character and righteous all the while holding hostile feelings born out of fear. I'd like to know, get as many of them out in the open as possible so I can identify them and walk the other way and know exactly what they are. Well, now that you know that corporate, corporate interests are being served here to the highest level, well, hey, we know what, what the game is. 
Now I know what the game is, and it ain't played here. The ACC has watched its commissioner, Jim Phillips, hoodwinked time and again. Go back to the asinine alliance with Warren and the Big Ten. They were buying time. They were buying time to put together the ultimate coup. They were not aligned with you, but you fell for it. You fell for it because you believe somebody other than yourself cared about what was right and what was good for college football. But the SEC was never a wolf in sheep's clothing. Either was the Big Ten. They were the wolves. They walked through the door as wolves, not sheep. They unabashedly fought for their conference. And guess what? You may not like Greg Sankey. I may not like Greg Sankey. But I know what he is, and I know who he works for, and I know what his intentions are. You chose to ignore that evidence. Walk blindly through the maze, hoping that somebody would come to your aid. How could you do that? That is a dereliction of duty. Three weeks ago, when you began to hear the talking heads begin to hint of any possibility, that an undefeated Power Five conference champion with two wins over the SEC in a year in which the ACC has a winning record over the SEC would be left out of the playoff in favor of a one-loss team, maybe multiple one-loss teams. The second you caught wind of the narrative being born, tossed into the ether, it's out there. As we say on the show over the years, kings are killed, Mr. Garrison. You know what they're about to do. And you sit blindly, idly? How are you not on every show in America refuting the ignorance, refuting the storyline, positing overwhelming statistical evidence that is simply a false narrative because you're weak. And for the last time, we suffer the consequences of you being puny, impotent to do anything to help the cause of the conference that you work for. We can talk about exactly why it happened or how it happened and who's most responsible. But at the end of the day, the television networks are going to do what the television networks are going to do. This is Fox and ESPN in an all-out war. You got to go. You got to go. You may want to be in the SEC, and I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about Florida State. You may want to go to the SEC. And you may have wanted to use the Big Ten's offer to Florida State as leverage to get into the SEC. You have no more options. You have no more time. You have to leave yesterday. They just told you, resoundingly so, you don't matter. So long as you're in this conference, you don't matter. You can beat LSU. You can go to the Swamp and beat Florida on the road with a backup quarterback. You can win every single one of your games. You can be 13 and an O and a blue blood, which Florida State is a brand and as a college football entity is. And they are going to, by definition, they just told you, they are going to make sure that the SEC and in the future, the Big Ten, are represented. They have a financial stake in the game. If they can find a way, they're going to find a way. They started the narrative before Jordan Travis went down. You can bet they were hoping against hope at that time that they could make it stick. But when Jordan Travis broke his leg, like a Cheshire cat, they sat back and went, we got it. We've never used it before. We've never used it before, but it's in our bylaws. We are going to F them thoroughly because now we're going to cite the injury, guys. It's right here. It's written down. We can cite it. We can do it. We can make it up as we go along, and we can be sure that we get our SEC gods in this thing. Trust me. We've got it. It's over. Just keep telling the talking heads to say it over and over and over again. Any chance they get, feed the narrative that Florida State doesn't belong because their quarterback got hurt. That's all we got to do. Say it. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Paul, make sure you lead with it every show. Got you guys. Man, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. And they did it. But it's out in the open now. 
and they could do it because they knew there would be no reciprocity. What could happen? The, the thing changes next year to 12 teams. It'll never be forgiven, but it'll be forgotten by the vast majority of college football fans. You won't forget. I won't forget. None of us who got royal and bent over. The kids who played this season, who sacrificed the coaches, who put that team on the field every week prepared to win a football game, they'll never forget. But largely speaking, the rest of the college football world will, and they'll consume the product knowing that it's corrupt to a level beyond what we knew to be reasonably so. We've talked about before how corrupt college athletics is. That's not new, but the analogy that I've always used is, okay, you're going 80 and a 70. They're going 160 and a 70, and nobody cares, and you can't catch them. You can't, you can't reverse course. You can't make it go away. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. It just happened. So Florida State sits here today stinging, hurting. No, nobody wants to play that Orange Bowl. I agree with Tom Wang. We're not going to exactly bleed for the Orange Bowl committee who recognizes now that they've got a bowl game that on paper looks great, but nobody's going and nobody's playing. Half of Florida State's roster is going to opt out of that game, and you can be sure Brock Bowers and the other stars of Georgia aren't going to play in that football game. And what fan is going to go down to that football game after what just happened here? Good luck with that, man. Good luck with that. It's a sham. And it's a shame. It's devastating. Now you galvanize and you find a way to leave. And it probably won't be pretty. You're probably going to get sued, but you got to go. You got to go. You got to go in an hour. You got to go. Tom and I will lay out what we think has to happen in terms of infrastructure, money, and process as far as trying to leave, trying to get out of here, trying to ensure that you can protect Florida State University athletics. It's Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chan TV.